Good morning. <laughs> uh, welcome to the Phoenix Seventh Day Baptist Church. I am not a minister. This is my fourth sermon, and I'm still shaking. <laughs> uh, anyway, we had a wonderful uh, week. We went up to the first time, been here seven years, and have never seen the Grand Canyon. So we drove up there. What a view. I tell you, you look down that, it's just like you're looking at a picture. It's so deep. It, little tiny river down there. That's the Colorado River. Like, Whoa. <laughs> but we had a great time. We took the train ride from Williams and all the way to the Grand Canyon. It was even a little warm up there, and we saw a bunch of elk and deer and uh it was really interesting and of course the tour guides they tell you everything but anyway uh let's close our eyes for a minute we'll ask god's blessing father we're so thankful that you love us because we sure didn't pick you you picked us we ask your blessing on my words, I ask for the Holy Spirit to guide each word that I speak. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. God's love for us. Well, I tell you, uh, trying to do, I wouldn't, I don't think I could make it as a full time minister. You get so nervous and, oh, is that the right thing to say? Or, or will somebody be offended, you know? But uh, we're going to start off with Hebrews 10, 16, if you'd like to look it up. Oh, you know what I forgot? I forgot that we're going to do our, our, our song first, and then we'll have scripture and prayer. So uh, let's have Just As I Am. Good morning, everyone. And today, our scripture is John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent his son into the world to condemn, sent, for God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And shall we bow our heads in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you for the joy in being able to congregate here that we still have the freedom to congregate here and though and that even though we're a small congregation today our hearts are filled with love and the holy spirit and these things we ask in your son's name jesus amen all right our next song we're going to pass on today and we'll start with my wonderful sermon <laughs> uh, God's love for us. In Hebrews 10, 16, God says, I will put my laws into their hearts and in their minds. I will write them. So we were living out on some island and didn't have the Bible. We know in our mind it's wrong to kill. Even today, uh, we have laws, man's laws, which kind of copy the Ten Commandments. You know, uh, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, you know, not having an affair. It, uh, it all uh, works out. And being that the law is in our mind, we know when we're doing something wrong. Even as a baby, you, that little baby can throw a tantrum and you know 
They know it's not what they're supposed to be doing, but they do it anyway. Uh, you think about things like, uh, if I was a thief, it's okay as long as I don't get caught. Or uh, it's only, I only took a little. I didn't take a lot. So that's okay. But it isn't. It's wrong. Jesus says, if we even think about stealing or doing something wrong, it's the same as doing it. How about... Um, it's just a little lie, a white lie. No one will know. God knows. We are to keep the law through even our minds. So as we're doing our daily chores or work, you know, we're not cheating our time. We're, we're doing a good job for the Lord. When I used to do insurance work, Always put in my mind, okay, God is going to be seeing what I'm doing here. Uh, if I don't do that, well, that could mess the job. But the customer won't know. But I knew, so I wanted to do it for God because he's watching what I'm doing. God hates sin, but he loves us. He takes us just as we are, even if we've done things wrong. And we finally turn our hearts and say, you know, uh, maybe I should be doing something different. No sin is too awful for him to forgive. All we need to do is accept Jesus as our personal Savior and ask for forgiveness for our sins. So, in the long run, sin is death to us. If we have not accepted Jesus as our personal Savior and repented of our sins, we will not see heaven. We need to do our very best as a child of God. When we've given ourselves to Jesus and we get baptized, our sins are washed away and we are filled with the Holy Spirit and become a new person. When we're in the baptismal, we plunge beneath the water and when we rise up, we're being washed from all our sins. And we're putting an end to them. We rise triumphantly, full of the Spirit and ready to walk in newness of life. Our sins are washed clean at that time. Does that mean we never sin again? No. We fall in ditches. And Jesus is our high priest in heaven. He reaches down once we've asked for forgiveness and he pulls us right up out of that ditch. And we start walking anew. The difference is that we will truly regret sin. And right away, we ask God to forgive us. When we ask for forgiveness of our sins, he not only forgives our sins, but he doesn't remember them anymore. They're in the deepest part of the sea. And we're a new person. He doesn't see our sins. He sees Jesus in us, which is great. Thank goodness. After we repent, 
we will do our best to make sure that we do not sin the same way again. It, it, I can remember, you know, I, I had a problem with cussing, saying bad words. I grew up in a family where my stepdad was an Italian. So you can imagine the language I grew up with. And as I got older and when I got baptized, I thought, man, that word came right out. Bam. And uh, I kept praying about it, praying about it. Lord, help me to stop this. I mean, every word was bad. It took two years of me praying. The, uh, the Holy Spirit works on us sometimes slow, but he keeps working and working on us. And all of a sudden, I said, wow, I didn't say the words I used to say. It just was a new type of, it shocked me. I said, thank you, Father. Thank you. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. When sin, then sin has no power over us because Jesus died for our sins. His grace will save us from sin. And that means that he died for us, knowing full well we would be born and we would sin. He died for us anyway, and all we had to do was to believe and repent and become children of God and followers of Jesus. And as we make our journey through life as a Christian, all this time, though, we know that we are God's child, saved through his grace, and that he loves us more than we have ever been loved before. He even loved us before this world was made. He knew you. He knew me. Even before we were in our mother's womb, he knew us. That, that's hard to comprehend. Uh, for me, it is. You know, how did he know me? Thousands of years later, I'm going to be born. He's, he's going to know me. Unbelievable. After accepting Jesus as our Savior, we will begin to learn about him. We will go to a local Bible teaching church regularly and read our Bibles and learn more about our Father and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. That's what teaches us. As we go along our Christian walk, we will be tempted to give it all up. We will review and I've done it many times. I look back when I was younger and I did for a lot of bad things. Probably all have. But your mind goes back to that and you think, oh, how can God accept me? Whoa. But he doesn't remember those things. He knows about them, but he doesn't remember them. We're a new person, a new creature through his son. Sometimes I uh, I think back and I regret the sins that I, I have uh, been forgiven for. We need to recognize this and know that we are saved by grace and that the devil has no dominion or power over us. I can remember one night I was being attacked and I hollered the name of Jesus and it left immediately there's power in his name 
Romans 6.23 says the wages of sin is death, but we are given eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. I'm so grateful that God loved us, aren't you? Without him, I would be lost. I love you, Father. I can't wait to see you, your heaven, your angels, and all that you have waiting for us. We don't know what he has. It hasn't entered our mind. But he has some wonderful things for us just waiting. I want to see everyone in heaven, all of us. We're a family. I remember when Linda and I got baptized years ago. They forgot to fill the baptism. And it was, I think it was early spring, April, if I remember, or maybe February. And so the baptism wasn't even filled with water. It hadn't been heated. So they turned on the outside tap, and in came the street water. And I'm telling you, it was cold. So we went into the baptismal step by step, very slowly. We, we really wanted to be baptized, but I tell you, when you step into ice water, hmm. So we went in. The water was ice cold. I'll always remember that. And when I went under, I tried to get up fast because it was so cold. And my feet slipped out. And I went deeper in. <laughs> I reached up with my hands trying to pull out, get that cold water. <laughs> uh, the pastor grabbed me. He says, he pulled me up. He says, you okay? You okay? Like, yeah, I'm okay, but it was cold. But you know, when you get baptized, I don't know about any of you, but when I got baptized, I had a feeling that I'm going to come out and have this religious experience. This is going to be a new way to live. It didn't happen. I was kind of disappointed. But uh, I didn't have that wonderful, wonderful feeling I'm baptized. God does things his way, not our way. Through the years, he has changed me. Like I said, it took me two years of praying for my cussing to stop. I didn't like it. Then it stopped. And I haven't used those words since. The Holy Spirit works on you. Don't do that. Don't do that. The Holy Spirit can do his work on us very slowly. But he keeps on working on us. Thank you, Father. I want to live for Jesus and my Heavenly Father. Don't we all? I pray all for, excuse me, I pray for all of you, to remember Jesus, his love for us, and to keep him in your heart. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, I'm nervous, but I know that we have said things to praise you and things that we have done that you have forgiven us and we ask for your Holy Spirit to live in us each day, every moment, to always remember you in everything that we do and say. And I ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. And we have one more song, The Lord's Prayer. 
You will open your bulletin. It'll be the second one.